All right, Keith Phillips, Science Project. Go ahead. William Montague Cobb. W. Montague Cobb was born in Washington, D.C. on October 12, 1904. His mother, Alexine Montague Cobb, was of Native American descent. This is a Native American dream catcher. Miss Montague Cobb would have had one of these hanging by her bed due to her Native American genes. His father, William Elmer Cobb, hey, don't sit like that. William Elmer Cobb owned a printing press in a black community in D.C. Dr. Cobb became interested in the field of anthropology at a young age when he discovered a book belonging to his grandfather called The Animal Kingdom. <laughs> That's not the Animal Kingdom. Oopsie! <laughs> <sighs> I'm getting graded on this tomorrow. Sorry, it's okay if you pull out the wrong prop. Here it is. Sorry, Dad. Um, in the book, he saw that white men and black men were listed as different types of animals. That is boobs. This made him want to study humans and racial dignity. Dr. Cobb went to Denver High School in Washington, D.C., and then went to Amherst College in Massachusetts. He studied embryology, embryology, study of animal eggs, at the Woods Hole Marine Biology Laboratory. He also earned his M.D. Doctor of Medicine at Howard University in 1929. He later studied at Case Western Reserve University, where he earned his Ph.D. in anthropology. Dr. Cobb spent his life disproving myths about racial biases. He wanted to prove that African Americans with the were he African Americans were humans with the same brain and physical powers as other races. He wrote many several books about the the human brain and about the consequences of segregation and racism in America. But his most famous work is a, a book titled Race and Runners about Olympian Jesse Owens, who he wanted to prove that Jesse's great athleticism was not, was not a direct result of his African American gene, his African genes. He ran many tests and could not find any evidence that race had any effect on his physical attributes. In, <laughs> In 1976, Dr. Cobb was elected president of the National the National um, Association of the Advancement of Colored People and NAACP. As president of the NAACP, he continued to work on advancing the rights of African Americans, especially in regards to health care, work, discrimination and hospital segregation. This is a button that he would have worn on his jacket when he went to work. As his legacy, he left his collection of over 600 skeletons with the Laboratory of Anatomy and Physical Anthrop Anthropology at Howard University. Dr. Carr died on November 20th, 1990. Thank you. Very good. Now we just got to find you a fake little skeleton to pull out at the end. Very nice. Good job. <laughs> Gain some weight, skinny bones. Bye, a... Dad. I'm the skeleton. Yay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Good job, kiddo. Bye.